Hello, hello everyone. It's Conal Finlay here, the owner and director of The Seller Store down in New Zealand. And welcome to today's episode of The Seller TV. So, today we're trying a very fantastic white wine. It is a Chardonnay. We haven't tried many Chardonnays uh, so far. And so this is one of the, well, in all honesty, it's probably one of my favourite New World Chardonnays. Well, of them all, yeah, basically. And so... Here it is, a little close-up shot for you, for everyone at home. It is the Migration Vineyards um, Russian River Chardonnay. It is from the 2014 vintage as well. And so to give you a little bit of a rundown about Migration Vineyards, basically, Migration are the Russian River, or Migration Vineyards are the Russian River output of Duckhorn Vineyards. Uh, and so it's one of their secondary wineries, if, uh, if you want to think about it like that. And so Duckhorn, they actually own a few different specialized, and when I say specialized, I mean regionally specify, uh, specialized and specific uh, vineyards and wineries uh, all around California. So Napa Valley, well, hold on, put it this way, not every single grape varietal uh, does greatly uh, in every single, uh, well, in Napa Valley, for instance. And so Duckhorn have known this because they've been around for yonks. They're the ones that sort of put Merlot on the map. Uh, in many respects uh, for California and so they're based up in Na Duckhorn Vineyards, they're based up in um, St. Helena in Napa Valley and that's where they've planted Cabernet Sauvignon, they've got some Merlot, they've got some Chardonnay and a little bit of Sauvignon Blanc there as well uh, but yet then they've decided over the last sort of 20-30 years that it's not necessarily the best place for Pinot Noir and they've done that quite rightly, they are completely correct there and so they bought some land in uh, Sonoma County and then that's when they se set up their uh, decoy vineyards and this is where they've got Pinot Noir, they've got a little bit of Chardonnay there as well uh, they've got some Zinfandel because Zinfandel can't necessarily handle the heat uh, up in Napa Valley but it, with the cooling influences there in Sonoma County uh, it can actually do quite well a little bit of Cabernet Sauvignon there as well a little bit further up we've got Russian River and this is a lot more uh, closer to the coast there as well so it's getting a lot more of that sort of those cooling uh, Pacific influences there and so Chardonnay and Pinot Noir are the only great varietals that they actually plant in migration vineyards uh, in, the, in the Russian River output. A little bit further, uh, further north again up at Anderson Valley uh, they've got Pinot Noir uh, being produced under their GoldenEye uh, name as well and so that's a lot cooler, a little bit more sort of misty uh, which is perfect for Pinot Noir. Anyway, so Migration Vineyard, as I say, this is the, well, pretty much one of my favorite uh, New World Chardonnays. Uh, and it is for the reason, because of the fact that it has sort of got that uh, the primary fruit structure, something you'd expect from uh, something from New Zealand or potentially Australia, sort of that really rich and ripe sort of stone fruity, a little bit sort of tropical fruity uh, as well. Uh, but it also does have that sort of creaminess and a little bit of oak there, nothing too much in any of those particular um, parts, but they all come together and they create the most perfect Chardonnay recipe, for, for me anyway. So anyway, let's give this a slight sniff. Mmm. And so I like to have it known as well that I have, I, th I did decant this wine uh, about an hour and a half, two hours ago to make sure that it really is sort of singing. And for those of you that are new to the channel, um, or new to the videos and watching them all, you're probably not really necessarily aware that I am actually a big proponent of decanting, decant, 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 uh, whether it be red wine, big sort of juicy, oaky uh, Cabernet Sauvignon or something like that, uh, anywhere to a white wine, anywhere to a Riesling or, or a sweet wine or a um, sparkling wine as well. Uh, many people will probably think that naturally absurd because they just think sort of decant equals red wine. It doesn't, not at all. Uh, the idea of decanting is actually first and foremost to sort of oxidize it uh, not in a bad way you often hear of oxidized wine as being a terrible thing uh, and yes technically generally speaking when you pick up a bottle of wine you open it up uh, pull the cork or you undo the screw cap and you find it is oxidized then it's a faulty wine but why we are constantly swirling it around in our glasses as sort of wine experts um, and wine tasters and all the rest. Why we do that and why we decant exactly the same reason is because we want to get a little bit of uh, oxygen around there. The oxygen allows for then the wine to sort of open up 
uh, if you think about it, all the wine has been in the bottle for, I don't know, however many months, years, uh, decades even, in some circumstances. And the wine has been in there in, uh, well, an anaerobic uh, environment, so no oxygen has been in there at all. And so what we want to do is we want to really just open it up, allow for some oxygen to come in there, and then those tightly bound little aromatic molecules, they will sort of dissipate, well, not dissipate, but they will sort of open up and uh, as they warm up and as they oxidize or come in contact with oxygen and then that will allow them to sort of change around their little shape because they imagine they're all sort of clunch you know crushed up into a little box or a little um little uh, structure down here and you want to sort of open them up and once they're in that sort of structure when they're sort of oh, opened up then that's when they sort of really become alive and their aromatics just sort of start bouncing out so that's also a good reason why you don't want to have it too cold when you're serving it as well. Anyway, I digress. Completely digress. But the underlying point is do decant. Do or swirl around, you know, do whatever you want. And it doesn't have to be a fancy $100, $300, $400 uh, decant or anything else like that. If you've got a bucket, I mean, this is a spittoon. I wouldn't be decanting my wine into a spittoon. But if you've got a, a big bowl, a big uh, sort of jug or something like that, chuck it into the jug, get some air around it. Uh, and then get a funnel or something like that. If you don't want to be serving wine from a jug, doesn't necessarily look uh, very uh, proper at a, a d dinner party. Uh, and get a funnel and chuck it back in the bottle so it looks nice. Uh, and then that way at least you've sort of decanted it uh, for a little bit of time, got some air around it, and then it looks nice when you're pouring it again. Anyway. <laughs> right, anyway, back to the wine. Migration Chardonnay. Mm. Okay, so on the nose. I mean, Initially, I'm getting a whole lot of sort of those citrusy sort of flavors, a lot of lemon curd, sort of a lemon meringue sort of note comes through, and then you start to get a whole bunch of uh, sort of stone fruity flavors. So that's where the peach, that's where a little bit of sort of yellow nectarine, sort of a little bit of yellow, yellow plum, golden apple, that sort of a uh, golden apple sort of flavor is coming through there as well. Just a touch of pineapple, not too much, just a touch. And then, of course, that lovely sort of creaminess, that sort of uh, slight bit of oakiness there comes through as well. But for me, it's more sort of sort of shortbread, uh, sort of baked pastry sort of flavors, those sort of really quite complex and interesting sort of nutty things that are coming through as, as well. A little bit of hazelnut. It's lovely. Anyway, it's a very, very complex Chardonnay. Let's give it a taste. Mmm. Mm. 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 So again, like many of many a good Chardonnay, it's got a whole bunch in there. So it has got those really creamy aspects on the palate there. That sort of beautiful richness and ripeness of the of the very clearly abundantly ripe fruit uh, that went into making this. But there is that sort of oak influence and sort of that melolactic fermentation influence as well, giving it a sort of really creamy, rich. Uh, an inviting sort of texture and mouthfeel on the palate there. So it is quite full-bodied, uh, well, I'd say medium to full-bodied wine, but it does also have that sort of saline minerality uh, acidity sort of running through there. But it's very, very well balanced, um, cannot sort of fault its uh, structure at all. As far as the uh, flavors are concerned, we're getting those same sort of flavors, so a lot more of those sort of tropical fruits here on the palate, at least for me. Slightly sort of um, citrusy uh, floral note coming through as well, sort of like a citrus blossom comes through. Uh, but then again, those sort of the creaminess, that nuttiness, that again, those sort of uh, pastry and uh, sort of almond croissant, uh, those sorts of buttery flavors, they're coming through there as well. But nothing too much. Um, it's all very, very, very well balanced. Those sort of secondary primary fruit flavors really just sort of coming together in perfect unity. Um, so yes, anyway, I cannot highly recommend this Chardonnay enough. Migration Vineyards, Russian River uh, Chardonnay 2014. So please do uh, have a look at the information down below and the little caption box and all the rest. Uh, that will give you a little bit, or straight, take you straight to the website where we've got this little sucker. Um, and you can buy your own bottle if you want, uh, or a couple of bottles. I definitely recommend probably getting a couple, uh, a couple to have now and a couple to have later. Uh, put it down in the cellar for another two, three, four years, perhaps. Uh, and then.